Okay. Mr. Mars See? has a special feature. Five cars <laughs> under fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars. I was thinking more along the lines of under five thousand dollars when I saw the cars that you were going to put up. Well, so so the so idea. No, was, so what is so the, yes, the what is the was, idea? If you were a young person, <laughs> younger person and or somebody even your age, for example, and you Well wanted thank you to for start, throwing me into that. <laughs> you oh, wanted boy. to start a car collection or you kind of wanted to start getting involved in the hobby. What do, you, what do you look for? I mean, it's easy to say, oh, I want a 67 GTO, or I want a 69 Camaro, or 69 Boss Mustang. It'll cost you thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Oh, yeah. Not everybody can start that away. So I was trying to find something that you might could start with that might actually be a vehicle. Is this a car that you're thinking maybe your granddaughter could uh, get into? Uh, one of them or two of them could be, yeah. But I was thinking more of something that people seem to be having an interest in that might actually be... Uh, appreciating in the near future. For example, the uh, Mazda MX-5 Miata is a very popular car out on the track. Richard Tomlin and them run them all the time. But the very first year, known as the NA, is the only one that came with the pop-up headlights, and they are uh, something that people are looking for because they are rare in the world of the Mazda Miata. So that's something that might make that special. The NA. The NA is what they called it. Not available. It was the very first year. <laughs> you know, so it's got the pop-up headlights. You could have a 1.6 or 1.0-liter engine, a uh, five-speed or an automatic. So it depends on what it is, but it could be something that in the future would appreciate just because there's not a lot of them around. Another one that is a very similar thing is a Toyota MR2, particularly the AW. MR not. Oh, yes, MR. <laughs> MR2. Yes, MR2. <laughs> An AW11. Now, this is, again, the first generation of the MR2 that was produced uh, from the 84 to 89. It is a mid-engine, so that's one of the things that makes it very different. Uh, it has a very distinct wedge shape. But it's the very first year that it was built, so there's not a lot of them around. So, again, that's something that could add to the yeah, appreciation I of a collectability. I could see it. Now, the Volkswagen Golf GTI MK2. Now, this is the second generation. Would that of be the, the Mark II? Uh, it's the MK2. The MK2. It is the second generation built in 84 to 92. And it was part of that hot, ha- hot hatch era. It really kicked it yeah. things up. Because of the performance with it and the handling, the build quality. They scream. And uh, yes, they did. So again, something that could become uh, a little more valuable in the future. The Jeep Cherokee XJ. Now, this is one that um, you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt or leave it. You know, it's. it's <laughs> or leave it. It was built the side of the road. 1984 to 2001. God. And it's considered one of the things that led to the popularity of the SUVs. It's, and it's where it came in with the SUV with the off-road capability. It's a two-door. It's the F1 of That Jeeps. is a two-door version of it. 4.0 liter uh, engine in it. And with a V8. With no horsepower. With an inline six. Uh, oh, a six. lot of torque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, some people have put V8s in them. You know, so it, again, it's something that could be collectible and is reasonably priced at this level for a collectible car. And then the last one that I was going to talk about is the Ford Mustang Fox Body, 1979 to 1983. Now, this thing in particular, as we talked to the Mustang guys, like Randy and them, they, this is something they mention a lot of times is the Fox Body Mustangs because of the had a 5.0 liter V8 in it. So it was a pretty hot rod because it was pretty light, handled fairly well. Uh, and then it's just a matter of, you know, body styling. Do you care for that kind of a body style on a Mustang? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, but the engine and the popularity among the Mustang guys are what make this potentially a, a car that will appreciate in the future, therefore making it collectible. Well, well there you go. Would nice. you buy that? The Mustang, I did, I, they all have a little bit of a tickle in my fancy, so I don't know. Uh, I'd have to, they'd have to grow on me. They would. So, Je- so, Jeff, we're, we're going to give you one of those cars. I'll What's take the Fox Body. Yeah. Okay. And then after and, and the then Fox Body. The GTI, the little screamer. Yeah. Uh, and Which then the, problem, the Miata would be the in there. The problem is with that era that those cars probably have 300,000 miles on them now. Yeah, there's, they, but they're, they're, you've got parts. You can get parts and you can upgrade and you can, you can add on and you can. You can restore hot reasonably rod. well or a hot rod. The Mustangs in particular, uh, that Fox body, there's just tons of them out there. I mean, my, really? aunt had, my aunt had one that was a convertible. It wasn't a hot rod. Aunt who? Uh, my aunt that lives here in Canada. Aunt who? Danita. 
Aunt Danita. Yeah, yeah. So she had a convertible. That was Aunt B. And, uh, was it Aunt B? Oh, Aunt D. Aunt B. But it was, it was a real nice driving little car. It was a little car. You know, to me, it had no relationship to the earlier Mustangs of the 70s, that we, 60s and 70s that we grew up with. But it was a neat little car, and there was tons of them around at yeah. the time, and there still are. Yeah. And it's, they're worth something to somebody. Exactly. And that's what makes some of them collectible. And we see stuff like that at some of the car events we yeah, go to. Yeah, we do. We actually. Do. Yeah. Yes, we do. In all sorts of conditions. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's, but, you Mazda know. Mazda with a Wankel motor in it. Yeah. There's that. Mm-hmm. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. And be sure to follow us on Facebook. We're back in a flash. 